Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. And that's right my friends, I'm back with another 2017 catch-up vlog with this week's movie being Colossal. The latest movie from the director of Time Crimes, which is one of my favorite underrated horror science fiction hybrid movies. Well, science fiction horror hybrid and comedy of all things. But unfortunately, trying to describe Time Crimes to someone who hasn't seen it is a bit of a fool's errand, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. I love that movie. So naturally, when I found out that the director of Time Crimes had a new movie coming out starring Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis, and that that movie was some sort of dramedy that featured giant kaiju monsters, I was initially super super excited about this movie and couldn't wait for it to come out. But then all the early buzz happened and while the movie was receiving critical praise, it became one of those movies that became over hot taked. Just mountains and mountains of articles analyzing the movie inside and out and yada yada yada, with everyone pushing their own little angles of the movie super hard and their own little political agendas, and even though some of those opinions I would eventually agree with having finally seen the movie, at the time I was just really tired of that kind of dialogue and needed to disconnect. It's kind of like what happened with Ghostbusters or what's happening with Black Panther right now. Eventually you hear so many opinions from so many sides, and I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but eventually I reach opinion overload and start to lose sight of how I really feel. And whenever that happens, that's the moment I have to step back, take a breath, and recollect myself. So while I'm glad I did that because that reinvigorated my passion for movies and talking about movies, it did mean I ended up unintentionally avoiding this movie. So anyway, long story short, I eventually did see this movie, and having finally seen this movie, I want to say that I fucking love Colossal. This is a fantastic movie, even though it is not at all the movie I was expecting. Because I thought I was walking into a dramedy about a woman child who recollects her life and gains responsibility with this giant monster metaphor happening around her. And while that is a huge part of this movie, about halfway through it becomes a completely different movie. And when this happens and you sit back and you think about the rest of the movie that you had watched earlier, you realize that it had been setting up being this movie from the get-go and you just didn't notice. Now some of you astute viewers out there will probably have noticed the thing that I didn't pick up on, but I'm not going to tell you about it right now until we get to the spoilers because I feel like experiencing the movie firsthand is the way to go. This is one of those movies where the twists and turns are best experienced in the moment and not knowing about them beforehand. Now the one thing I will say is I felt like this movie on the dramedy scale leaned far more on the drama than the comedy, to the point where huge chunks of this movie I was sitting there going, is this really a comedy? Because while yeah, there are some comedic moments, especially involving Anne Hathaway's friends, overall the first half of this movie felt like a straight drama and the second half of the movie feels like a completely different kind of movie. It just happened to have some comedic parts. But truth be told, much like time crimes, trying to figure out what genre this fits neatly in is also a fool's errand. Because it doesn't fit neatly in any genre, and that's actually what I like about it. This is a truly unique movie with many great twists and turns and characters you actually care about. Now granted, some of the characters you end up hating by the end of it, but at the beginning you do care. And let me just say, as great as Anne Hathaway is in this movie, and she is truly fantastic in this, she is vastly overshadowed by Jason Sudeikis, who gives one of the best performances of his entire career. Which I guess isn't saying too much, because usually he just kind of plays the same generic straight man in a comedy movie, but he goes above and beyond in this movie in ways I cannot describe until we get to the spoilers. But needless to say, I did not think that he had this performance in him. So mad props to Jason Sudeikis for truly surprising me. The one thing I will say about this movie though is that the giant monster special effects is pretty subpar in this movie. The designs of the monsters are actually pretty awesome and I love how they end up tying into the plot as the movie goes on. But the actual quality of the effects are... Mm, not quite there. But ultimately it doesn't matter because you're not actually supposed to be scared of those monsters. They serve as a greater metaphor for something else that's happening in the movie, but it's not what you think it is. Because you think the monsters serve as a metaphor for how much of a monster she becomes when she's drunk and just wild, and how when she's drunk she doesn't care about who she hurts or what she does. And while that is there a little bit in this movie, it's much, much more than that. But I cannot say any more just yet, so with that said, I'm going to include an Amazon affiliate link to Colossal in the description below, because the movie is fantastic and I highly recommend it, and I even highly recommend it to all those horror fans who didn't think they were going to like it, because trust me, by the end of this movie, you're going to like this as a horror fan. And with all that said, uh, I guess it's time to move on to the spoilers. So this movie opens up with a prologue of a giant monster appearing in Korea. 
And there's this little girl that witnesses the monster and she starts to cry and scream. But then after this prologue, we cut to New York City where we're introduced to Anne Hathaway. And Anne Hathaway's character in this movie is basically a journalist who has recently been laid off from her job. But instead of searching for a new job or putting her life back together, she has been getting drunk every night. And she's been partying with her friends and she's been kind of neglecting her relationship with her boyfriend. Which is why when we're introduced to her, she's coming back to her and her boyfriend's apartment where she finds her boyfriend sitting there really angry. And her boyfriend is actually played by Dan Stevens doing his actual British accent. And it's kind of amazing. When you see Dan Stevens in The Guest, he comes across like a gruff badass. Because his American accent is so deep and awesome. But when you see him here using his British accent, he comes across as super prissy and I don't know I just think it's kind of funny how different voices make the same actor feel completely different but that's neither here nor there the point is he's mad at his girlfriend because she is getting drunk every night and not getting her life back together and what I really like about this dynamic at the beginning of the movie is it's kind of a reversal of something that usually happens in comedy movies because if you're familiar with the works of like Will Ferrell or Adam Sandler usually a movie will feature some sort of man child and the women in these man children's life will tell them that they got to get their act together and then we spend the rest of the movie of them trying and failing and then eventually getting their act back together. But this movie's different because the man-child is actually a woman-child and the boyfriend is pissed off instead of the girlfriend or wife. And that simple switch in dynamic was interesting because I found myself while watching the movie being harder on Anne Hathaway than I would have been if she was played by someone like Will Ferrell. And it was very interesting because it seems like the only actual difference there between the two is the genders. Which is pretty cool. I like it when a movie can give me something like that to digest and chew on. Anyway, so the boyfriend kicks her out of the house and tells her she's got to get her life back together before he will take her back. So Anne Hathaway ends up moving back into her childhood home back in her hometown. And it's here we're introduced to one of her childhood friends played by Jason Sudeikis. And at the beginning of the movie, you really like Jason Sudeikis because he seems like he genuinely wants to help Anne Hathaway. Because over the course of the beginning of this movie, he ends up offering her a job at his bar, he ends up getting her a futon when her inflatable mattress keeps deflating, he introduces her to his friends so she has people to hang out with and isn't just alone in this town, and every time she gets drunk and forgets what happened the previous day, he makes sure that everything's alright. So I want to point this out, at the beginning of this movie, you really like Jason Sudeikis, you don't like Anne Hathaway, and you kind of are on the side of her boyfriend. Now mind you, this is all going to change over the course of the movie in glorious ways. But before that change happens, Anne Hathaway finds out one night after getting drunk at the bar, which admittedly, a bar job was probably not the best job for her because that will give her easy access to all the alcohol and she's an alcoholic. But I digress. The point is she gets drunk at the bar and walks home. But in between the bar and her home is this children's playground. And what ends up happening is that when she enters this playground, a giant monster appears in Korea. It's one to one with her. It's like she's playing virtual reality and the giant monster is a video game. Except she can't see what the monster is actually doing in Korea until the next day when she sees the news coverage. And at first you get really mad at her because she finds this really cool and takes it super lightly. But mind you, when you see what's happening in Korea, they're actually terrified. She's causing international incidents. And she's destroying buildings with people in them and stomping on people and destroying helicopters. Anne Hathaway at the beginning of this movie has a real death toll. But one thing I really like is watching her figure out all that's happening and figuring out all the rules and how it works. That was pretty cool because it emphasized the fact that she used to be a journalist. And I just thought that was really good writing. Anyway, after she figures out everything that's going on and how it works, she decides to show her friends at the bar what's been happening. But unfortunately, when she shows them that she's the giant monster, this is when Korea attacks the monster. So she ends up killing a lot of people unintentionally, and we also learn that anything that happens to the monster will hurt the person. Because they shoot missiles at the monster, and she feels like she's being punched all over her body. Which, pay attention to that moment, because that will become really important later on. Anyway, she blacks out after fighting the Koreans and then wakes up the next morning and realizes the death toll of everyone she killed and just completely breaks down and realizes that, oh god, she's a monster. And this is the point for me when Anne Hathaway's character starts to turn around because she truly realizes the gravity of the situation on not just a personal level but also a global level and then decides to make things right. She asks Jason Sudeikis to help her, and they end up going to these Korean grocers. And they have the Korean grocers write down a whole bunch of phrases on a piece of paper, with the phrases specifically written in Korean. And one of the things she has them write is basically an apology. So she takes that phrase, goes back to the park, and then when she appears, she asks her friends to make sure that everyone's run out of the way through the news cameras. And once everyone is out of the way, she writes in the ground her apology. 
And what's great is that this also becomes a metaphor for everything else going on because she also turns around her life. She stops drinking, she starts taking her bar job seriously, she starts spending more sober time with her friends and helping them as much as they helped her. And I like this moment in the movie because this is about halfway through and this is when your opinions start to change about everyone, not just Anne Hathaway. Because when she calls her boyfriend about all this, he acts like she can't possibly getting things back together because she is such a fuck up. And this is the moment when her boyfriend becomes just a complete asshole and you're no longer on board with him. But this exchange between her and her boyfriend is what prompts something else to happen. Because there's this cute but kind of stupid guy that hangs out with her group of friends, and she decides, hey, I want to sleep with that guy, so she does. But then she wakes up the next morning and finds out that the giant monsters are attacking again. So she gets the friend that she just slept with to drive her back to the park, where they find a shit-faced Jason Sudeikis fucking with the Koreans. And this is the moment in which your opinion on Jason Sudeikis completely flips 180. Because he notices that Anne Hathaway came with that other friend, and starts getting insanely jealous, bitter, and angry. And there's a moment that happens here that I want to talk about because it's one of my favorite moments in the whole movie because it makes you look back on the early parts of the movie completely differently. Because throughout this whole movie, Anne Hathaway has been getting really drunk and forgetting what happened the night before. And Jason Sudeikis has been meeting her in the mornings like, hey, yeah, you did this and you said this. Do you not remember this? But then in his drunken state, he does this to her again, but you know for sure she wasn't drunk and that she didn't say the thing that he claimed she said. And then you find yourself going back over the previous parts of the movie and you realize that, oh shit, she never got drunk and said yes, she would work at his bar. He just lied about that the next morning so that she would would feel obligated to say yes. And he's been doing this to her the entire movie. And that's when you realize that this movie is not at all the kind of movie you thought it was. Because what this movie actually is, is a creepy stalker horror movie. It's like fear if fear were a comedy and there was a weird giant monster metaphor happening throughout it. And my god, there are scenes in this movie in which Jason Sudeikis just goes pure fucking evil. There's an entire scene in a bar in which he lights off a firecracker and sets the entire bar on fire, which is one of the most intense scenes I've ever seen in a movie that seemed so lighthearted at the beginning. Now as to where this whole movie leads, what ends up happening in the final act that turns this whole thing around, I am not going to tell you because I want you to see that for yourself. But needless to say, the finale of this movie has a great twist to it as well. And with that all said, my fellow Gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And as always, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.